fade these players on Sunday in the NFL. Today we're talking all about unders. I know, nasty, disgusting, but they're printing so far this season. We're 11 and three on every under pick that I've given out in this video and or in other videos. Heck, they've been printing money and hopefully that you've been tailing. If you haven't, well, now's the time to tell. We got a couple unders that I love for Sunday. If you are new, my name is Austin from Calling Our Shot. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. If you hate unders and you've made it this far in the video, like 20, 30 seconds, there's a couple other videos I post on the channel. One of them includes every single money line spread total that I like for each of the games. The other one posted early on Saturday morning is going to be our favorite overs, which includes a lot of props and anytime touchdown parlay, which we cashed last week. Today's comes in at plus 760 or something like that, and a bunch of other props and parlays and stuff like that. So I encourage you to check those out. Both will be linked down below in the pinned comment, but give the unders a chance. They've been printing. Let's hopefully cash some more. At the end of this video, I have a parlay play entry. Last weekend, same video, we cashed our parlay play entry. It's right on the screen. You see it. It cashed. We're trying to go for back-to-back, -back, and we're going to be taking advantage of the free square they have right now, which is for Aaron Rodgers, Sunday, NFL, early 9.30 a.m. to get one passing yard. Hopefully, you signed up with our code COS before that game started, and you're going to match your first deposit up to 100 bucks. Take advantage of that, or you can tell the other three likes in the entry at the end of the video. Let's dive into some unders, and let's get nasty. First one of the day, Daniel Jones. Danny Dimes, under 31 and a half yards for his longest completion. Minus 120 on BetMGM. Now, I've taken uh, several longest completion props this season. I want to say, don't quote me on this, I think we're 5-0. Oh, let's make it 6-0. Oh. Now, obviously... We don't care if Danny Dines is the best game of his career. We just need him to not complete a pass longer than 32 yards. And that's going to be a tough spot job for him to do with that. Now, Daniel Jones, we have taken this prop for him once this year. Week three, and we cashed in that game. And we've seen so far this season, Daniel Jones is under this longest completion line in three of four games. He did go over last week. If you remember, it was on Thursday Night Football. It was Malik Neighbors. He broke the ankles of a Cowboys secondary guy and went up the field for a 39-yard catch. Jones, though, is averaging 3.4 air yards per pass attempt, fifth lowest in the league. Now, obviously, Blake Neighbors is a threat, and he is scary, and that's always scary when you're taking a bet like this. It's like, oh, that guy can make a play. But lucky for us, Malik Neighbors is out on Sunday. He is out with a concussion. And Seattle this season is lying the sixth lowest average yards per pass attempt. Now, there's a couple of different things that go into that. Number one or two, they, well, number one, they have a very good secondary. Uh, they have a lot of uh, elite young guys out there like Tariq Woolen, Kobe Bryant, and those guys. They make plays. Witherspoon's really good himself. Number two, they also blitz a ton. They rank first in pressure rate, yet they actually don't blitz a lot. That's actually a lie. They don't blitz a ton. They actually don't blitz about league average, but they get a lot of pressure. That defensive line is getting pressure. And when you're getting pressure, the guy doesn't, the QB doesn't have a lot of time to sit that back there and sling the ball down the field 35 yards, what would screw us here. Now, I do have to admit, on Monday Night Football, this uh, Seattle Seahawks defense didn't look good. They got carved up by Jared Goff. He didn't miss a single pass. He went 18 for 18. He completed two passes above this line. One was that big one to Jameson Williams. He was not touched. The other one was a 40-yard pass to David Montgomery, where it was started as a three-yard catch. And I want to say he broke like nine tackles. He was just... <laughs> and boom, he ended up with a 40-yard. Obviously, that can happen here, and that's kind of the, the con of taking a longest pass completion under. But also, you have to complete those big plays, and I don't know if he's going to have the opportunity to do so. We already know Daniel Jones this season has not been attempting a lot of deep throws. Throw on top of that, his best wide receiver, Malik Neighbors, is out. Other guys, Darius Slayton, is going to have a tough cornerback on him. And then Wandale Robinson, we know he doesn't go more than five yards down the line of scrimmage. So, And they're down Devin Singletary. So how successful will this Giants offense be? Your guess is as good as mine. But what I do know, I'm taking the under here, 31 and a half. I take it at 30 and a half. Let's hope to cash 2 and 0 on Danny Dimes under longest completion props. I love this one. I'm not going to touch his passing yards line, not touching anything. Just need a 31 or fewer long completion. Second play, surprisingly, it's an, another under and longest completion. And I like this one a little bit more than Daniel Jones. Andy Dalton of the Carolina Panthers under 34 and a half yards for his longest completion, minus 110 on BetMGM. If you only want to tell one of them, I would probably tell Andy Dalton. I like this one even more. I'd put more than one unit on it, but a longest completion prop can be a little bit fluky. You can obviously put a lot of data in there, but like I said, if someone breaks like three tackles, there's nothing we can do out there. It's not like I'm trying to tackle guys, although if I was trying to tackle, they'd probably break that too. But at the end of the day, I like fading Andy Dalton here, and I play this at 33 and a half if that's all you get. Now, if you've been taking this same prop for Andy Dalton while well, you're owing too, as in his two starts, he's actually gone over with a 35 and a 39 yard completion, both to Deontay Johnson. That streak is ending this week as he will face Chicago Bears. Chicago this season, ninth in opponent passing yards per attempt, 
and also second lowest passer rating allowed. This is a very good Chicago Bears secondary that is led by their star cornerback, Jalen Johnson. Now, I'm not certain if he follows around Deontay Johnson, but wouldn't shock me if he did. And even if he doesn't, Tyreek Stevenson, their other cornerback, is giving up a 58.6% catch rate and 79% passer rating. So he's been really good himself. In fact, only one QB this year has broken this line against the Bears. That was Anthony Richardson. And he doesn't even know how to read a defense. All he does is chuck it deep and hopes for the best. So he's taking risk after risk. Andy Dalton, a, a known veteran, I don't see him taking a lot of risks here. The three QBs, the other ones that went under, Stafford, Stroud, and Levis. Now, Levis, mm, whatever. He, I don't know what he's doing. But Stafford and Stroud, we know those guys are talented and they're willing to take shots. They still soared under this line. I think this is a great spot to fade Andy Dalton in this capacity. Uh, Deontay Johnson, he's off the injury report, but still coming in here a little bit banged up. He's going to play, but I just don't know if he's going to get the job done. And then outside of him, you're talking about Xavier Leggett. I just don't see them getting a 35-yard completion. So Andy Dalton also with owning lowest average pocket time of any QB, 1.9 seconds. Obviously a lower sample size than the guys that have started four weeks, but still a pretty low sample size and uh, a still pretty low pocket time. So not standing in the pocket too long. The Bears blitz at the ninth lowest rate, yet they still have the seventh highest pressure rate. So those guys are still getting pressures while they're not blitzing, which is important because we want as many guys in coverage as possible. Make those tackles. If you want to complete five yard passes all day, Cool for us. I'll take Andy Dalton under 34 and a half yards for his longest completion. My third play is only going to be a half unit play. It is plus money, though, and it is a system play. Deshaun Watson of the Cleveland Browns under 0.5 interceptions plus 125 at Bet365. Now, this is a system play. What does that mean? Well, we take quarterbacks under in interceptions against the commanders. We've done it the last two weeks. Joe Burrow and Kyler Murray. They both got the job done, did not throw a pick. Now, I'm only putting a half unit on it because it is an interception prop that can be a little bit fluky. Obviously, B Baker Mayfield lost the one on Thursday. He tried to throw an interception. They just didn't want to catch it. Hopefully, Deshaun is not trying to throw an interception, and hopefully he can avoid it. Now, let's talk with this one. Is Deshaun my favorite QB in the world? Absolutely not. Far from it. Do I think he's great? No. But point holds true. The Commanders, zero interceptions this season. Last year, they had eight total, and three of them came from Desmond Ritter, who basically was like me at QB. He sucked. Since the start of last year, 21 QBs to face the Commanders, only six threw an interception. So as I said, it's kind of a system play. We're going to keep rolling with it with Deshaun Watson at plus money. I don't think Deshaun is great, but I think he's played better than what people think he has played at so far this season. He has three interceptions to his name, two of them in week one. He did not deserve an interception last week. He threw one, and it literally bounced right off Amari of Cooper. It went, he was like, oh right off of him into a deep a defensive uh, back's hands. Sure, that could happen again. If that's how we lose, that's why it's only a half unit play because that would absolutely piss me off if that was over a full unit. But I like our chances here. I think the Browns are able to establish the run. I don't think Nick Chubb's going to play here, but this is a commander's defense that has struggled stopping the run, struggled stopping the pass too. It's not a really good defense. I think the Browns could win this game too, so they're not throwing as much late. I like Deshaun Watson. I like his under 0.5 interceptions at plus money. I'll take a stab at it. Just a half unit play. The first two or two units, just a half unit here. My fourth and final play in this video before we talk about a parlay play entry is a three leg SGP. Now, the point of this video is talking about fading guys. And in a way, this one is not fading a guy. If you get what I mean, he's actually the guy in the thumbnail. Three leg, same game parlay. Here's the three likes. Trevor Lawrence, under, 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 34 and a half passing attempts, parlayed with two legs, Brian Thomas, his receiver, and Christian Kirk, his receiver, for 25 receiving yards apiece, plus 165 on bet 365. Now, I already know there's going to be comments, Austin. I'm on FanDuel. I cannot bet, place this bet. It doesn't let me do pass attempts, unders, and blah, 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 and parlays. I get it. If that's your case, only take Lawrence under and pass attempts. That is obviously the meat and bones of this whole thing. And I expect meat and potatoes, whatever you want to call it. I hope that this comes down to just Trevor Lawrence under and pass attempts. Obviously, we're getting some negative correlation here because we're taking an under for Trevor Lawrence saying, hey, we don't want you to throw the ball. But in a negative correlation in the fact that we need two of their pass catchers to catch the ball. So you get what I mean? That's why we're getting plus 165. I imagine if you took the over for pass attempts, you wouldn't get as great value here. Now let's talk about why I like Brian Thomas and Christian Kirk. Well, Brian Thomas is really good. 40 receiving yards in all four games this year. Christian Kirk, 25 in three of the last four and 60 plus in his last two. So in my opinion, this is a good matchup for Trevor Lawrence to sling it to his wide receivers. I think Brian Thomas, Christian Kirk have good days, but I don't know if he's slinging it 35 times. There's plenty of guys that go out there and have massive days and they don't sling the ball 35 passes. And so far this season, 
Trevor Lawrence half a season looked good, but he is under this line in three of four games. He uh, was under a nine of 16 last year, including six of their eight wins. So when we think about wins, well, I can't predict if the Jaguars win. I do think they do. They're 0 and 4. They're desperate in need of a win, and they're minus 150 or minus 160 on the books. So the books are saying, hey, we think the Jags get a win here. We know about the streak. They've won, I think, 10 straight at home versus the Colts. I think they can get the job done here and win. Now, obviously, if they're winning in the fourth quarter, you're probably not going to be throwing it as much Just where we should cash that under 34 and a half pass to them. So if they're losing and he throws over 34 and a half, I'm fine with that. I'm okay with losing this play if it's the Trevor Lawrence. Like, I'll be very angry if it's Brian Thomas Jr. or Christian Kirk, but I think those guys have good enough matchups to get open. Last, QB so far this season versus the Colts. I'll put the numbers up on the screen. The only guy to go over was Caleb Williams. They couldn't get anything going on the ground. Uh, Lawrence's last five games versus Indi Indianapolis, he's under in all five with 32, 30, 22, 32, and 30. Um, last year, where they were pretty pass heavy. This is a, a team that could run the football. Bigsby, ETN, those guys have been pretty good this season. The problem is the Jags haven't been able to sustain drives. They've been consistently three and outs and stuff like that. And that kind of helps Lawrence go under and pass attempts. But obviously, it leads to them being in very negative game scripts, which does help inflate the passing numbers. I think this is a good game for Trevor Lawrence. I wouldn't be shocked if he throws for 200, 250 yards. But I think it's an efficient outing. And I think with an efficient outing, you're probably not getting to 35 pass attempts, especially if you're leading in this game. So I know it's a weird one, but I like the under for his pass attempts. Parlayed with two of his receivers, who I think have good matchups to get 25 yards apiece. It's a little weird one. One unit to win 1.65. I like our chance here. Like I said, if you don't have the ability to parlay them, you can do that on Bet365 and DraftKings. Then just take the under and pass attempts. That would be the smart way to do it. Just put a unit on that. You'll have, hopefully, you'll have, uh, hopefully it hits because then, and hopefully the other two likes it. Finally, we wrap with the parlay play entry. I won't waste too much of your time. We're trying to go for back to back. Last ca cashed last week. Um, again, sign up using code COS or the link down below. You'll get a match on your first deposit up to $100 to 100 free bucks. And Aaron Rodgers free square. Hopefully you get this in time for Sunday's early morning game in London. Aaron Rodgers, the first leg free square. We have to take us higher, even though the point of this video is unders. The other ones are the three other picks I talked about. Trevor, Daniel Jones, and Andy Dalton. All their unders that we talked respectively in the video. I'm feeling good about this card. Let's try to go from 11 and 3. Technically, the last play, I guess, is another one. So 15 and 3 on unders. Let's have a great day. Have a great Sunday. A reminder, there's a couple other videos live on the channel. If you want to go check them out, you can. The first one, top link, you'll see uh, pin. You'll see our favorite money lines, total spreads. Go check that out. Under one is a bunch of parlays and player props. The four Ps, go check out that video. And day four of our ladder challenge will be live somewhere, I don't know, sometime eventually on Sunday, most likely. Great day. Let's have a good one. Let's have a dominant week five, and I'll see you guys for Monday Night Football. I'll see you in the other videos. It's Austin signing out. Peace.